Hello. Is this thing? Okay. Yeah. It's because my microphone does not work in the laptop, so. So it's that okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sound and image. Yes. And this is, uh, thank you uh, for the organizer for the invitation to present this work. It's a project with Alex Arenas and Jesus Gomez Gardenes in, uh, from Spain. And we did a mathematical model of the spatial temporal epidemic spreading of the COVID-19 uh, in Brazil, or in Spain. And I'm, I'm PhD student uh, from Federal University of Viçosa in Brazil. And I'm spending a year here in Saragossa with Jesus Gomez Gardenes. Uh, to uh, work in, in data-driven models for the epidemic spread. So with that, we, uh, with the COVID-19, it was a perfect opportunity to use these data-driven models because we already were we stood in that and <clears throat> Uh, we can use this framework that uh, this group here in Spain developed for these past years. And the motivation is this paper from Nature Physics uh, that has uh, uh, the critical regimes by recurrent mobility patterns uh, in networks. And this project was uh, this paper represents. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, I heard an echo in the microphone. Um, this project, this paper, we use uh, human mobility to see the spread of a disease in a population. So uh, the coronavirus, for example, it spreads by human mobility. People traveling and, and interacting with other people, you will spread this virus. So uh, you, we have a crucial feature in this, in this COVID, that is the asymptomatic phase that we also included in this model. <clears throat> and the main idea of the original uh, paper in Nature Physics is that you divide the population of the, of the country, for example, or of a city uh, by different patches. And each, uh, each patch contains uh, a, a subpopulation. For example, you have individuals that live in a patch I and they travel to a patch J. And this travel, uh, this travel between patch I and patch J is given by the weight or the flow of people from one patch to the other. And we assume that once the, this person travels, uh, it goes back home in the next step. So for example, the SIR dynamics or the SIS dynamics, we can describe by Markovian equations, uh, discrete Markovian equations that consider the probability uh, to heal and also the probability to be infected. But this probability of being infected depends uh, if you uh, uh, stay in your patch, uh, this probability P uh, is about the movement, you decide to move or not. And also, it will depend on the probability to be infected when you are in another patch, J, for example. And it's given by the mobility uh, matrix. And you can assign this probability so people that live when in one place can interact in, in its residence, but also can interact in other places with other people, not only with the residence of the, the other patches. And this is uh, the example from the original paper uh, from Jesus Gardenas, Davi, Soriano Panos, and Alex Arenas. Uh, uh, they show an example with the city of Cali in Colombia. So you have different regions of the city and you have different uh, populations in each place. And you can define this mobility network by using census data, for example. And you can study, for example, the the epidemic threshold of this uh, of these dynamics using this meta population. 
So it's important that this is a model, uh, a data-driven model. So the model has the basic ideas of the spreading and so on, but also uh, put uh, the input of the model, uh, the demographic and mobility data. So it was a perfect, perfect model to use the in this, a perfect model to adapt to use in this COVID-19. So the first that thing that we did was a uh, map propagation, a map of the propagation risk in of the COVID-19 by local contact in Spain. Because when uh, if this mobility network is good, you can predict the communitary spreading of the virus. And to do that, the first thing that we did was to include two new compartments in the in the original model that are that is the exposed and the asymptomatic. Uh, like Sergio said in the previous presentation, uh, <clears throat> when you consider just flights and uh, the vulnerability of places, you don't need the exposed uh, compartment. But when you are dealing explicitly the, with the human mobility, you need these compartments that uh, that are important because the exposed are people that uh, cannot be infected because they are infected, but do not show symptoms and also does not spread the virus. But then they can become asymptomatic, spreading the virus without knowing that it has the virus. And <clears throat> this will happen to help to spread the virus and so on. So we have some data from the literature but, uh, about the, this period of the, of the exposed plus asymptomatic phases. And this is like a free parameter in the, in the model that you can use to, uh, to compare with the real data. And you, we use the, the framework of the original paper, but putting as well, uh, the surface area of the municipalities to deal with the density of people in each place and so on. So we adapted this original model to, to build this propagation, uh, this map of propagation risk in Spain. And so by using the reported case for each municipality as seeds for the model, we use this model to, to kind of predict how it would uh, spread in Spain. And it is a problem because we need this data on the municipality level because our network is also in a municipality level. So in the beginning it was difficult because uh, the government only reported cases by level of comunidades autonomous uh, like Madrid, Catalonia, and so on. So you don't have this resolution so the main idea was to find that information in the news and it was really difficult in the beginning but uh, the good thing is that we only use this uh, reported case as seeds for the first days of the infections in Spain so we didn't need anymore to be collecting this data by level of municipalities in Spain and so this is an example of the map. Uh, it's already really spread because it's in the middle of March when they, the government decide to make a partial lockdown in Spain. But you can see some areas that are more vulnerable for the spreading of the disease. Uh, some are not. And so you can have an idea and people could uh, see uh, by interacting with the map, uh, how was the risk in each municipality? And it received a lot of attention here with the with the news, and we show up in television as well, and and it was really good because we we got uh, really good attention from people um, here, and it was important to. Uh, to warn the people about the, uh, what happened in Spain, because we were working with, this, with these maps in the end of February 
and then people will come that uh, that the disease would not spread in Spain and so on. And then in the middle of March, it was a massive in you. Uh, use of the results. Uh, we are seeing the results. And so we also did to Brazil and Portugal just applying this basic model. So this uh, is in collaboration with Silvio, my advisor in Viçosa, in Portugal with Nuno and Igor uh, using mobility, uh, mobile uh, networks for Portugal and census data for Brazil, for example just to show an example of the application of the model. But the main uh, the main point of this presentation is the two, two preprints that we, uh, we made available that contains the main ideas of this model. Uh, the first part was to build the, this propagation map, uh, this map of propagation risk with a basic model, just putting two new, um, two new compartments, but uh, to predict and to test uh, different epidemic uh, containment scenarios, we use uh, a more robust uh, model. So in this more this more complete model, we use explicitly explicitly the urban demography, the population of each place, also the age structure of the of the population. House and as well the recurrent mobility flows that we already use in the original model, and also the contact patterns between people uh, from different ages. So you have, for example, uh, uh, old people interact more with young people, for example. So you have a matrix that defines the contacts, these contact patterns. And we still have the exposed compartment and the symptomatic compartment. But here we change the model with the hospitalized that requires the intensive care unit hospitalization and also the, uh, the deaths and also, uh, of course, the recovered people. So you have here some rates that relates to the, uh, to the probability to, to be really uh, in a severe, uh, have really several really symptoms of the disease. So you go to an intense care unit. And we also have the probability that uh, the person can die and also the discharge rate uh, from the uh, intensive care units. So it's a complete model. And the interact interactions between uh, susceptible individuals happens with the asymptomatic and the infected individuals that can spread the disease. And it's given by the contact matrix by age and also, of course, by the number of people that are in each one of these compartments. So the model now has this set of equations uh, for all the compartments. So it describes completely the model. And we have some parameters. Some of the parameters are, are adapted to fit uh, the, the data, of course, are three parameters. We can we don't know all the parameters for the COVID, and so you can have different fractions for the intensive care units. Uh, for example, for young, middle, and old people, and also the death rate and the and the uh, the time that people spend in each intensive care unit. And so we have a lot of parameters that we can adapt and, and test in this model. Uh, so like in the first model, the nature physics model, we have a similar equation for the, uh, the probability to be infected at time t, but it will now depends on the age of the, uh, of the person. And the mobility will also depend on the age of the person. So for example, here we assume that Young people and old people stay at its residence. The residence is the city, not an area of the city, so it's reasonable. And it has a probability to one, uh, the adults can travel. And because it's uh, the data flow in Spain, for example, is provided by INI, uh, like the IBGE from Spain. 
that has the data, the census data about uh, the work uh, places of people. So they have information of where the person lives and where they work. So it's a recurrent uh, movement and you can define that for the adult people. And like I said, we have a contact age matrix that is very heterogeneous. And uh, the reference is in the, I forgot to put in the slide, but it's uh, cited in the archive. And also uh, the density factor uh, to adapt the density of people and so on. So uh, these are the results of the model for different communities. So like I said, we need the, the case reported by level of municipalities, but we can uh, test the model at level of communities that we really know the data. The government provides the data by level of uh, communities, comunidades autonomas in Spain. So we have a very good agreement with the model uh, for a lot of regions and also for the of the world country. And here in the model, we only use uh, 47 individuals as seeds for the model. Uh, and these results show that only by using these individuals as uh, uh, seeds, we could predict uh, very well the spread, the communitary spread of the virus in Spain. And how to impose mobility restrictions? So we adapted once again the model uh, by imposing uh, a mobility restriction by is isolating a fraction of the adult population. So if you have this fraction equal to one, it reflects a total lockdown of the country. So now we assume that people can interact both at home, uh, given by the average household size of the, of the family, so we assume that young and old people now are is isolated at home and the adult pe uh, person can uh, can interact both at home and as well outside home because they you have people that has to work the police the supermarkets employees and the transport uh, transportation and so on so we have we have this fraction is not cannot be equal to one. So we have these uh, different contacts, both at home and both outside home. And we can apply this containment by defining the, a new uh, average number of contacts that now depends on time. So you can apply this measure, uh, this containment measurement of a time PC. And also this containment will change the mobility. So we can put uh, uh, you reduce the mobility uh, from one city to the other also by this fraction kappa. And we also put a permeability factor because people are not completely isolated because they have to go to the supermarkets and they have to buy groceries and so on. I mean, you can put this permeability that allows some kind of interaction with the with the outside home and to uh, to account the places the households that does not have any infected because if you you isolate everyone and you have someone infected in your family you are going to be infected so we put a new compartment that quantifies the probability of living in a place and does do, and do not have infected individual in your house so we can put this in the model and then we can have a complete isolation of these people that are isolated uh, without any infected uh, relative and also the, the rest of the, uh, of the compartments. And the contacts are given by this, uh, by this expression that accounts the fraction of uh, the density in each place, the, the degree, a normalization factor, and the contact by age matrix and the mobility of people, both by the asymptomatic and infected individuals. And in the infected individuals, we also put a parameter new that accounts for the self-isolation. So if you know that you have symptoms, uh, you have symptoms 
and you know that you are infected, you reduce your contact with people. So it accounts to this reduction. And these are the results. Uh, the, the number of cases basically given by this number of hospitalized and recovered and, and dead people. The recovered, we also are counting the people that are isolated after making and uh, receiving a test, a test result. And we also computed the intensive care unit of patient and compared that with the real data uh, provided officially by the government. Uh, our group has a contact with the, with the government and, and they could provide this data and it's also public available data. So we compared that with the model. And another interesting thing about this model is that you can compute analytically uh, the, the effect of the containment by only using the, the provided data. For example, the age stratification, the contacts, the demography, and you just put in the expression that we can derive, uh, we derive it in the, in the second paper, uh, in, in which we can compute this, uh, this reproductive uh, number, the effective reproduction number depend on time. And with that, we can see clearly that by turning the confinement and the permeability, you can uh, go from a regime of the, the flattening regime that is more famous, that we have to flatten the curve. So we can re uh, confine some people and then you, you just reduce these, uh, this number of people. Uh, infected uh, of new cases, but you can also bend the curve, so you can really dramatically dramatically change the results by putting these containments. So it's very interesting, and also mostly uh, it's very interesting because you can see spatially what's happening. For example, this is the reproduction number given by each place of Spain. For example, in a scenario that no confinement. Measure, measurements are made. So you can clearly see that cities that has are more central and has a reported cases like Madrid, Barcelona, Valencia, and so on, you have a very large reproduction number while the cities around it has a, a, a great, also a great value of this reproduction number, but it's smaller from, from the central cities. So you have a municipality uh, resolution. And by applying the, uh, the confinement, you can see how it will uh, be in the country by just applying this, uh, this result. And for Brazil, uh, it's not the object of this presentation, but I would like to just to show uh, brief results that we uh, make for, for Brazil. In Brazil, I am working with Silvio Ferreira, my advisor from Viçosa, and Guilherme Costa, which is also a PhD student. And we are uh, using a stochastic version of this model, of this model from the original paper in Spain. And in this stochastic version is really good because we already have experience with this epidemic, uh, epidemic uh, process. We use we stood the epidemics process for many, many years. Uh, uh, all my academic life was in epidemics pro process. Uh, our group in Viswazi works very well with that. And in Brazil, for example, we have this mobility data that uh, is given by the census data plus the, the data from uh, the airport network. And I would like to thank uh, the Marcelo Gomes for the for the data uh, from Fio Cruz, and it's really nice to see the, uh, the network, uh, the mobility network in Brazil. And by using the demography, you can see that you cannot treat Brazil as a a single patch. You have uh, heterogeneities in the uh, large heterogeneities in the the country, it's a big country, it's almost a continent. So we have uh, places that are very dense, densely connected 
in places that are not so well connected. And, and I would like also to, uh, to comment here uh, the same thing that several uh, said that in Amazon, for example, we have to consider the, uh, the connections of people that travels by the rivers. And in this data, we can have an idea from the census data, but we cannot have the complete figure. So we can improve this mobility network, but we, we can already see that we, uh, it's important to take in account the heterogeneity of the, the demographics of the county. And just to show some very, very preliminary results we, we are founding, finding, and we can, for example, with this uh, stochastic model show that if you reduce the mobility by, for example, eight uh, percent, it does not make so much effect uh, effect in the in the number of infected individuals. And but if you reduce the contacts of people to social distance, you can reduce dramatically the uh, uh, the behavior of this disease. So like I said in the beginning, uh, it's a disease driven by human mobility. So it's very important to take into account the social, uh, the social future of this, of this model. So, uh, and of course it's uh, in this work, we are trying not to predict things, but to show uh, what can happen with the current data, because we all know that we have, uh, we do not have uh, sufficient sufficient uh, tests to know the real situation in Brazil. So, but at least we can see uh, some some uh, some behaviors that can happen in Brazil. And one of them is the spreading from big cities to smaller cities. And you have a huge heterogeneity both in the, in, the, in the time window of that infection last in the population and also in the peaks. So for example, here you have the capital uh, having an infection, a peak before the other cities around it. For example, it, uh, this graph is Minas Gerais and Belo Horizonte, for example, and then there are the other regions of the of the state uh, can have a peak only really uh, uh, some days after the uh, the situation gets better in the capital. So it's important to see and to warn people that even if the capitals are. are uh, does not have any problems with the coronavirus and we can relax the measurements, you have to see what can happen in the, in the, in the other cities, in the smaller cities. And for example, here in the this snapshot, we can see uh, after some time, Belo Horizonte, for example, uh, already does not have any uh, have a low density of infected individuals while the cities around it can be uh, with a large fraction of the of the individuals inf infected. Just to show, uh, this is an example and of that happening. So, for example, you can see São Paulo and Rio will be red, and then it will be like that. So you can see, uh, especially what can happen in the in the with this model. So uh, that's all. I would like just to present some resources uh, uh, to help uh, us to, to analyze the Brazilian situation. I have been collecting this number of cases by level of municipalities in this website. A lot of people already know this website with this data set that I I update every day with the number of cases by municipalities by using data from the zero.io and also the official platform and also some most recent case to have a, a, an idea of the, of the case by states. 
and it's freely available. You can use as we, we wish. Uh, the data is there. We confirm the number of cases and also the number of uh, deaths. And and also some uh, some papers about uh, that the American Physical Society uh, collected the coronavirus collection, and we our papers are there. For example, uh, five hours from Silvio, and also from uh, Jesus Gomez Gardenes, Alex Arenas, Clara Granel, which are, is also a, a, an author of this of this project, and Benjamin, Benjamin and uh, it's it's good to see this collection because we have a real literature about epidemic process and we we can use that to to know the to work with the real data now because we have to use uh, the literature and we have uh, we discuss problems with these models because we we cannot uh, some assumptions that we make in these models are not so well and we you have to analyze that and it's important to take that in account and so that's all thanks and these are the two reference of this of this of this project uh, from spain and i would like to thanks the caps because i'm i'm here by the programa de doutorado sanduich the uh, from caps uh, as a PhD student, uh, guest PhD student here in Universidad de Zaragoza in Spain. So that's all, and thank you. Thank you, Wesley, for your very interesting presentation. And uh, we have uh, time for, for a few questions. I would like to ask you uh, about underreporting. How do you, how did you take in account in your model uh, the case <laughs> of underreporting? Uh, because, for example, in Spain, as far mm -hmm. as I know, uh, uh, the number of testing is, uh, is not the same as, for example, in, in Norway or other countries. Spain is about uh, 8,000 per million inhabitants. And I would like to know how to, how to take into account the case of underreporting in your model. Mm -hmm. So the case of underreporting, uh, we can adapt uh, or have an idea of this by using the free parameter that we have in the model. For example, this exposed plus asymptomatic phase, we have a, a parameter that is the time that uh, the person is spent in these two compartments. But by tuning this, uh, this trade-off of the time that it's spent in the exposed compartment that people does not spread, for example, we can like turn this, uh, this parameter to fit the data. Of course, it's not a real number of cases, but you can have an idea or adapt your model for this, of the, uh, for this, uh, for this information. And the important thing is that even with this underreported report, we can have an idea of how it spreads. Um, it's important that we we use this data. We know that this data is underreported, um, but we we uh, we have to state that in the beginning of the work. And of course, uh, the situation, for example, all the results here are like a a lower boundary, uh, a lower bound of the situation because the situation can be a lot worse. So it's a lower bound for the for the original or for the real situation. And if the, this lower bound is already uh, uh, scary, uh, it's not good because uh, we have really, uh, really dramatic results using this, uh, this underreported data. So we know that and we have to, take that in account every time. We have to know that it's the case are underreported and you have to take into account and discuss that and show this is a, the situation by using the, the report case, but the situation can be worse. But we can only show uh, using the information that we have.
it's okay. Oh, oh sorry. And uh, uh, more questions or comments? Yeah, uh, I have a question. Ask please. please. Yeah, uh, Wesley. Um, first of all, congrats for the for the talk. Nice, nice work. Very nice talk. And um, in fact, I have uh, uh, one question about that uh, contact matrix. In our work, uh, we decided not to include that because we we had just an uh, heuristic feeling. Uh, uh, in my in my idea that it should be more or less stronger in the main diagonal, and uh, somehow it should be symmetric. I mean, um, for example, this uh, zero point two four should be more or less the same as zero. 038 i mean you see it in, in mm -hmm. my idea how how do you do, do how do you get this so this is uh this contact matrix i forgot to put a reference here but it's based in uh in, uh, in the polymod study i don't know if you heard about that mm -hmm. is uh i studied that they did in a lot of in many many countries in spain like france belgium and France and other countries that they they study the the relationship between people from different ages. For example, the original contact matrix has contact from people for each age, not only for the group of uh, of age. And this matrix uh, they they did this analysis for the other countries. And for Spain, for example, they use uh, a model that uh, that they built to uh, to describe this uh, this real data from these other countries, and with this this with this model they could find the contact contact matrix for all the other countries. For example, Spain. I think Brazil is as well in this in this this paper. So even in the real data, you have this uh, asymmetry between the mm -hmm. contacts because we have people uh, the old people can interact more uh, uh, because it's an average of the contacts so people uh, old people can interact with the young people at home and the young people can interact with old people visiting these other people is not uh, always a symmetric relationship because we interact not with the same person but with different person uh, person so you are taking into account the age of this person of these mm -hmm. of these people so since it's an average uh, you can have this difference between the mm -hmm. between the contacts of course if you consider on a subset of people the same people uh, a closed system that uh, you have these contacts you can uh, you need to have a symmetric matrix because you uh, it's a reciprocal uh, relationship but uh, since it's given by uh, census data and mm -hmm. uh, and different sampling you can have this difference in the in the behavior so for example old people stay at uh, uh, at the at the residence but a lot of adults and young people can visit them, but they cannot uh, go out of the place. I'm thinking something yeah. like that. Yeah, I, I understand this asymmetry, but uh, yeah, in my feeling, it would not be so so large difference. Yeah. For example, element one three and three one should be more or less the same because when uh, I mean, if you have the same amount of uh, of mm -hmm. uh, Population. The population is more or less the same when a child visits uh, the the grandfather, the the grandmother. It's it's, it's kind of uh, the same. Uh, yeah, it, it's still an interaction between uh, different age groups. I I, I can nice. feel the difference, but uh, I I was not expecting that uh, so so big difference. Yes, uh, it's important to remark here that it is the probability that your contact will be with a uh, younger or middle mm -hmm. of yeah, older. Yeah, yeah. So. You yeah. can have this asymmetry because of that as well. Because yeah, we, in our case, we, we had nine, mm -hmm. nine, uh, nine groups. So this mm -hmm. matrix would be more or less random for us. We 
We mm -hmm. was trying to see if the social media connection should be more or less a, um, a symmetric behavior, <coughs> if it should be so difficult for us to, to mm -hmm. compute. But uh, okay, thank you very much. That uh, was some uh, awesome work. Uh, nice presentation. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you again, uh, Wesley. Uh, uh, okay, uh, I would like to, to inform that uh, the, the presentations will be available at the IIP web page. Uh, I have uh, some of them. I think the speakers uh, who was uh, uh, read sent us and I, I ask all the speakers if they can, they, they, uh, they share with us the presentations. Again, the videos from the presentations uh will be available uh, uh at the 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 web page the iap web page okay we